The climate crisis has prompted UN warnings and global protests and resulted in billions of dollars in damages for everything from intensifying hurricanes to devastating droughts. And in Oregon, the climate crisis has also prompted all of the Republican state senators to walk out of the Capitol and in some cases flee the state just so they can avoid voting on a bill about it. Before you ask, no, this is not a headline from The Onion. And get this, it is not the first time Oregon lawmakers, both Democrat and Republican, have pulled this kind of stunt. CNN Politics and Editor-at-Large Chris Eliza is in Washington. Chris Eliza, how did we get here? Uh, we're, we're APB on these senators, where are they? Well, good to see democracy working well, right, Burke? Okay, so <laughs> here, here are the 11. Now, what they are doing is this. There's something called a quorum in almost every legislative body, including Congress. So it essentially means there has to be a minimum number of uh, elected officials in the chamber itself in order to do any official business, including voting. So the issue is not whether if these 11 people, these 11 Republicans voted against this bill, which would effectively cap greenhouse gas emissions, it would still pass. If there was any vote, it would still pass. There are enough Democrats in the Oregon State Senate and the the governor, Kate Brown, is a Democrat, so it would pass. So what they are doing is trying to, uh, essentially, if you go back 30 years in basketball, North Carolina famously had the four corners offense. There was no shot clock. So once they got ahead, they would just hold the ball and let time run out because if the other team doesn't have the ball, they can't score, they can't win. That's what's go happening heels. here. The, mm -hmm. I knew I put that North Carolina mention Thank in there you. for you. Thank uh, you. That's what's happening here. The legislative session ends June the 30th, which means if they can stay out of the chamber and the state police have called them and said, hey, we'd like to have you come back, but they've not gone and got them. Many of them you mentioned out of state, many of them in Republican friendly Idaho, by the way, mm -hmm. then this bill will die. And even Democrats are saying it's probably dead. One other quick thing, you've mentioned this has happened before. It has, it happened before this year in May, uh, these same Republicans walked out because they wanted, they were upset about a tax cut uh, bill that was in the legislature. It worked out then because the governor and Democrats wanted to find compromise because they had all these other legislative priorities coming down the pike, including this climate change bill. Well, now there's nothing left on the legislative agenda except this climate change bill, which means Democrats have no real leverage to bring them back other than the state police, and they're probably not gonna do it. But look, this, Democrats have done this, by the way, too, uh, uh, Brooke, in Oregon, so it's not just Republicans, but this sure. is not how a healthy democracy works, right? Yeah, no. I think we can all agree that so hiding in another state is not what our elected officials should be doing. Yeah, they're, they're not in Washington, though, and I'm going to explain why in just a second. Chris Eliza, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank More of those Oregon lawmakers in a sec, but right now, let's turn to the Democrats vying for the White House. With a little over 24 hours before the first debate, we are learning more about what the candidates are doing to stand out. For some, you know, it involves watching debates of old, while others taking note of how uh, body language may be perceived on camera, and still others are getting ready to defend their records and, if necessary, attack those uh, of their rivals. In Washington State Governor Jay Inslee is one of them. He is live in Miami. Governor, a pleasure. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank, thanks for having me. All right, so you hit the stage tomorrow night. Give, give me some specifics, mm -hmm. Governor. How are you preparing? Well, I'm preparing by listening to the people of Florida who really are at ground zero of the climate crisis. I was at the Everglades yesterday where the scientific community have told us that seawater intrusion is not only destroying the Everglades, but jeopardizing the drinking water for about six million Floridians. Today I was in the Little Haiti uh, neighborhood of Miami, where essentially climate refugees of people who live on the coastline, whose homes are now being flooded, are having to go buy property uphill, uh, sort of dispossessing people of lesser income who live on a little higher ground. No, and, and so I know if I may, Governor, I, I know that this is the focus of your campaign, but you got to give me something. I mean, are, are you watching old tape? Are you thinking of, you know, body language? Are you thinking of attack lines? Like what, what's running through your mind here the day before? Just telling uh, our story and our vision statement that we know that this is not, uh, the climate change is not a problem. It is an emergency. Okay. And what's going through my mind is how to articulate both my experience which has been vast and successful in Washington, creating a 100% clean energy bill. Our plan, uh, our vision statement for creating 8 million new jobs, that's been called the gold standard in the last 24 hours, which I appreciate. 
and most importantly to articulate my level of commitment. And I am the candidate, the sole candidate, who has made a pledge to make this the number one priority of the United States. So experience, vision, and commitment, I think that's what we need, much more than stunts uh, like's going on in Oregon to defeat the climate crisis. Yeah. I want to ask you about that in just a second, but uh, staying on the climate crisis, you know, the vice president uh, refused to say climate change is a threat during this interview with Jake Tapper. Here's a clip. Do you think human-induced climate emergency is a threat to the United States? Well, what, what I will tell you is that we'll always follow the science on that in this administration. But is what people are calling a climate emergency, is it a threat? Do you think it's a threat? Man-made climate emergency is a threat. I, I think the answer to that is going to be based upon the science. Well, the science says yes. I'm well, asking you what you think. There's many in the science that... The science community debate, in your own administration, uh, yeah. at NOAA, yeah, I got uh, at, the, at the DNI, they all say it's a I threat. Got it. Look, what, what the but president you won't, has said, for some what we've said is that we are not going to raise utility rates. So you don't think it's a threat is all I'm saying. You don't think it's a threat. I think we're making great progress reducing carbon emissions. America mm -hmm. has the cleanest air and water in the world will continue to use market forces. We don't have the cleanest advance. air and water in the world. Jake tried. The vice president wouldn't go there. Governor Inslee, your, your reaction to that? Well, if he was here, I'd say, Mike, you need to wake up and smell the carbon dioxide. <laughs> carbon dioxide pollution is not only the highest in American history, it's the highest in, in our time on Earth. And it is maddening to me, and we ought to be angry about this, that we have people like Marsha Moss, a woman I met, whose mobile home was incinerated in the horrendous forest fires where 80 plus people lost their lives in California. And here we have the Vice President of the United States refusing consciously to help the victims of this crisis. It's maddening to me that, you know, the farmers in the Midwest have a Vice President who is abandoning them as they're being drowned. They deserve better. They deserve someone to that'll be willing to buck the coal industry. Look, this is an administration totally owned by the fossil fuel industry. We need a leader such as myself who will look those people in the eye in the fossil fuel industry and says, this won't do anymore. We're not gonna shell out $20 billion of your goodies anymore. We're gonna build a clean energy economy and put 8 million people to work. That's what America needs. I'm up to that challenge and that promise. Uh, I want to move on, Governor, to, to what's happening in Oregon. You heard Chris Liz's reporting. Republicans mm. there are, are literally, literally hiding. They're leaving their own state to avoid voting on this climate bill. Uh, you tweeted that they are not welcome in Washington. So, A, what do you make of this? Uh, and B, would you, would you also order police to track them down? If we had the authority, it would probably be appropriate to help my friend Kate Brown who is showing leadership dealing with the climate crisis. Look, this should not be a partisan issue. It is both Republicans and Democrats whose homes are burning down in California. It is both Republicans and Democrats today in Miami whose homes are being flooded and having to pay taxes by the millions of dollars to raise the streets here. We ought to be unified as a nation to develop the the 8 million clean energy jobs that are there for the taking if we have a plan to put these people to work. So these stunts are uh, most immature and most dangerous because this is a dangerous threat to our health, to our national security. Now, it's not the only thing we need to do. We need to do what my state has done, which is to raise the minimum wage, uh, get the biggest teacher pay increases in the United States, uh, develop the first public health option in the United States. These are all things that I've been able to achieve leading my state. But we have yeah. to unify against the thing that threatens our very existence. That's the climate crisis. We'll be watching for you tomorrow night, Governor Inslee. Thank you, you so bet. much. Good, good luck. Thank you.